I met a gypsy. When did the relationship with Justin start? Because so for I I had heard for a long time that well basically like since JB got on Gas Gas that like that was a goal was that he wanted you as a trainer. So when did when did that relationship with him start and why is that something that he would have wanted as bad as he did? It's I honestly don't even know how to answer it. Um, I mean, we were teammates for a long time at Geico, so we became friends. I was older. He was better than me. So it's like I looked up to him, but he also maybe looked up to me in a way because I was the oldest guy on the team, and I was kind of the one that, you know, I had the driver's license or the rental car or whatever. So it was like uh, I was kind of the older guy, but yet, I mean, I looked up to him. So it was kind of like a mutual respect the whole time in our career. Um, yeah, he's cleaned me out for sure. He's cleaned everybody out and you know, but I never like, I don't think I ever held it on him enough where he was like, like, I didn't care. Like he'd come over and say, sorry. And I'm like, well, we, you know, you're an idiot, but we know I get it. I was probably in the way, you know, <laughs> we'd, like, we'd high five and whatever. Yeah. I'm like, Hey, I get it. You know? And I never got mad. And I think that was part of it. And I think we were always good to each other one way or another in our passing or, Hey, how's it going? Good luck tonight. See you later. We just had a mutual respect our whole time. And then when he was riding for Yamaha, Dude, I don't know. I think I did a little bit of testing for him, and I think we worked on some starts, and he went to the red as and he hole shotted, and then he won. So it was like nothing planned. It just happened to work in a place where I wasn't kind of tied up that day. We helped him a little bit, and then I helped him a little bit one-on-one. Just I'm talking – I mean, it wasn't much. It was a little bit of minute stuff, and I think he enjoyed it, and so honestly, so did I. Um, and then that's when it kind of started, and then I – you know he was like, man, I need you in my corner. I want you in my corner and this and that. And I was just kind of, again, just like Tyler, no different. It was like kind of unsure of myself. Like, nah, you know, I have a job. I'm okay. And, um, you know, I'm not sure about that. And then, like I said, he didn't stop dude. And yeah. Why exactly he wants me there? I mean, besides the fact that I'm just completely flattered about it, I don't know the exact reason. And I think just because I think he knows, I, I know what, they go through day to day. I know what it, what it feels like at the end of the day at an outdoor national, like how depleted you are, how you feel and on Monday, what to expect. And then if he says he's tired, he knows that I know he's not, you know, BSing me. He, I know that, yeah, he probably is tired, you know, just done four races in a row and, and still practicing and all this stuff. So I think that, yeah, I think that's probably it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Fuck. What a crazy, like, that I didn't know that you guys did the the you know worked on starts and stuff together and then so as an athlete like when you do something and you haven't won in a long time and then something happens and you win whether it's like Christian Craig with red gloves like that probably started somewhere like that like there's some powerful shit that goes on mentally um, when you tie something to a race win and then so let's fast forward you start working with Justin and Melville <laughs> and people are just like what the fuck is going on like what you know people were saying like what could Will Hahn possibly have done in two weeks but it's like okay the issue with Justin is obviously not fitness or riding a dirt bike fast like there's something missing and like Justin obviously felt that there was something missing so it's pretty crazy what can happen in a guy's mind um, around like ingredients for success. Well, I think it, I think it's more so the trust in me. I trust him and yeah, we didn't, we didn't do anything that changed him in two weeks from fifth to one like that. No, it's not, that's not like that, but it's the overall demeanor of the whole team. Like I think everybody had their position. Everybody was happy. Like dude, the, the vibe under the truck, like, I can't even explain it. Everyone's high-fiving each other before we even won. Like, it was just going to be a good day regardless. It didn't matter what was going to happen. Then Michael's crushing it. Pierce was too. Unfortunately, he crashed. But it was just one, like, that was our bad part of our day was Pierce got together with RJ. And, like, it was scary because we thought Pierce was hurt. But luckily, he wasn't. And it's just, it's crazy how those things come together. But it's honestly just the overall environment of everybody. When everybody knows their role and everyone's clicking. And at the end of the day, dude, it sounds stupid. Everyone's happy. Happy is a big, big role. 
If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.